So we'll move on to the second game in this series. Um, I chose to pick Dutch, uh, just because they are relatively safe overall, usually. And uh, he elected to pick Aztec, which surprised me. I was expecting him to play Japan or something he's more comfortable with. I've actually never really seen him play Aztec. Um, but I suppose it can be a tough matchup for, for Dutch. Um, if they make any mistakes. And, um, yes, we'll jump right into it. So first thing I'm thinking this game, uh, going into this, is that Aztec could potentially be rushing me um, quite hard. And so I actually like to put no villagers on gold. Um, I had the, kind of the ideal crate start to a 14 villager age up. Uh, so I'm planning on doing that, if I can get away with it. Uh, aging one vill early would mean that I could have units out like 30 seconds faster, which would be good, and uh, make defending the rush a lot easier. <clears throat> so basically all I'm going to be focusing on is making sure my vills are moving as little as possible. Um, so I'm going to be keeping... I'm pretty much going to not move them as much as possible, except for this one vill, because I want to hurt. <laughs> and that's basically going to ensure that I can age up earlier. So he does contest this treasure a little bit here. Thankfully I do manage to pick it up. Um, one thing I see a lot of people do when um, their explorer gets snared like this is they'll just... Basically what they'll do is they'll take their explorer and they'll just right click like straight back to their base and sort of just forget about their explorer. Like they don't even try to get away or anything like that. Um, so uh, you should basically always try to get away. Uh, it's not always that hard. <laughs> I'm actually pulling the explorer with the envoy there. It's one easy way to get away. But um, yeah, if you're always snaring their explorer back, even if you can't get break the snare yourself, uh, it will still buy you a lot of time to sort of walk, um, walk back to your town center or or your extra units or whatever, and uh, help you escape that way. Um. But yeah, I also, I noticed this uh, Cherokee treasure here, which is an insane treasure room. He's going to walk back and try to grab. Uh, he basically just gets two units off of this. He gets like the Outlaw Rifleman, which is insane, does 40 damage at 18 range. Then the Cherokee, which puts a lot of pressure on him early. Um, but first he sees me grabbing this treasure, decides to <clears throat> try to kill me once again. So I'll just bring back my Envoy, do the same thing as before. I tried to snare him there, but I kind of failed. So right there, I snare him. You see, he, d he can't actually attack me for a moment there um, because of the snare. And I, he just ends up um, deciding to go for this treasure instead of trying to finish me off once he realizes that I've escaped. And so just aging up. I do kind of want to deny this treasure if I can, but uh, I did just use my crack shots, so there's no way I can really kill his outlaw. I'm just going to walk in here and harass him just a little bit, but ultimately not really going to accomplish anything. Yet. Just get one shot off on the pistol air and just got to run. Just last word a little bit. Just doing normal Dutch things, gathering for the bank in transition, scouting the extra hunt. Gonna make sure I heard that uh, while I still have uh, time. You'll see that because of that um, decision to try to get that 14 villager age up, I'm actually not even aging that much later than him. Which gives me a lot of time to sort of set up my defense. So I'm also scouting also scouting his base here. Um, one thing you won't always want to be aware of when you're playing against Aztec uh, is that they could be sending like three warrior priests and going for this weird sort of fast industrial sort of build. <clears throat> and so I'm here, I see the 700 wood, and I just want to 
Uh, make sure that he doesn't have warrior priests or anything, that he's not doing anything weird. So 700 wood uh, tells me that he's probably doing something relatively standard. <clears throat> Meanwhile, back at home, I'm just dropping uh, buildings here. Um, these sort of buildings will cut him off from my gold mine. Then I end up dropping uh, the bank sort of right in here. Or do I replace it? No, I don't. So this sort of blocks off the hunt, gives my skirms kind of like this nice little pocket back here uh, to sort of defend if they really need to. Explorer is just dead, that's unfortunate. I probably could have lived there. I'm not sure why I didn't try to kill that with my bills or anything. Oh well. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I'm chopping for an extra house here and then sending eight pikes uh, just because I'm really concerned that he could be, um, that he could be doing uh, something quite fast. I think what I actually I saw I saw something else here with my envoy. Sadly, I wasn't paying attention uh, to pick up on it, but I think I saw the six hundred wood shipment uh, come in while my envoy was still in his base, and um, what they ended up signaling to me. Um, I noticed he has a trading post as well. What ended up signaling to me is that he might not be doing a standard build. So what I'm watching for right now, now that I know he has one trading post, I'm watching for the second trading post as well. Uh, because there's, yeah, there's a second trading post. As soon as I see the second trading post, I push out. Because there's this, uh, there's this other sort of common Aztec build where you send 700 wood and 600 wood and you just grab basically all of the trading posts and you grab stagecoach. Um... And you just sort of contain your opponent to your base while you have this insane economy behind it. But it sort of sacrifices your uh, your early mass. And so as soon as I saw what he was doing, I decided to uh, just push the war hut, knowing that he didn't have a lot of units to defend it. I even end up calling a Minutemen, just because if this push doesn't work, I'm probably kind of screwed. <laughs> she calls Jags just because he's forced to try and defend this. And uh, I know that I'm like on a really like short clock here. I need to like take this down as fast as I possibly can, because uh, he potentially has like unit shipment on the way. Yeah, ten mace is about to arrive, and um, he doesn't have anything else coming. But that would definitely be annoying. I think looks like he uh, does get it out. Sadly, I didn't get the warhead down before it arrived, but not too big of a deal. Um, the main thing is now, he has no war hut. He has to be rebuilding his war hut uh, back at home. I don't think he's even rebuilding it yet. Uh, just because he... Oh, he's building it right here, actually. Um, but yeah, so now I know that I have time, because he can't possibly be training units. So I have time to sort of siege this trading post, uh, send 700 wood, get banks up, stuff like that. Just trying to defend this TP. Not going to be very effective with uh, Mace against Skirms, though. I'm getting the TP. I end up being a little bit too greedy here, I think. Um, I sort of didn't anticipate um, that he could have his racks up so soon. <laughs> I even didn't anticipate it when I was commentating just now. Uh, but yeah, I didn't think he had his racks up so soon, so I decided to check for another trading post instead of going back to my base. And I think, if I remember correctly, he ends up catching me, sort of, right here. Yeah, so his units are coming in just to see what I'm doing, and they end up running into my army. And this trade doesn't end up being too bad for me. Um, definitely could have been a lot worse, though. So, thankfully he doesn't have enough coyotes to really do anything. But seeing this fight, I decided to send three Hussars. Um, instead of dropping a fourth bank like I meant to, I drop a stable and another house. And um, yeah, I think if he'd sent like if he'd sent like five Coyote runners, I don't even know if he has that in his deck, does he? He does. If he decided to send five Coyote runners or something like that, like right after that. Stable finished, he needed 10 coyotes when he was pushing here instead of 5. I could have potentially, like, just lost my lead right there. Thankfully that didn't happen, but, um, 
Yeah, I was definitely too greedy trying to stay out on the map with my army. While I wasn't training any more units, I was just building banks and planning on aging. <clears throat> Thankfully, I'm not punished for it too hard. But uh, this does sort of almost get him back into the game. Managed to barely fight him off here. And then three Hussar are coming in. And uh, pretty much as soon as he sees these Hussar, uh, he realizes that he's pretty far behind, and so resigns. And um, so yeah, just kind of... These games are kind of just an example of like what um, you can really do with the information you get from scouting. Like for example, when I saw 700 wood and 600 wood, and I saw the trading posts, and I realized that there was no way he could possibly be getting all the trading posts and trading units. So I decided to push. Um, or even in the last game, when I see the thousand gold come in, and uh, he's constructing walls, so I think there's a good possibility that he'd be aging. Uh, just these, these sorts of things that people, I feel like, don't really look for enough, and uh, you should definitely try to take advantage of in your own games. Um... So yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll do some more of these in the future.